Okay, today I want to talk to you about brake boosters. Every day of the week we talk brake boosters at West Coast Classic Cougar because every booster needs uh, replaced at some point. Generally you don't get more than a decade out of them. When, they, when the cars sit, oftentimes what happens is the seal goes bad on the master cylinder and leaks caustic fluid in there. That kills them and if you drive your car every day, 10 years, that's what you get out of a booster. And it's a nightmare when you go out and try to find a replacement because the information varies everywhere you go. I, I just laugh when I go to eBay and you'll put in 1967 or 1970 Mustang or Cougar, a brake booster. Misinformation across the board. There will be six different pictures on what a 67 brake booster should look like. And a lot of them are coming from Cardone. In fact, the majority of them are coming from Cardone. But the information embedded in these websites, in Cardone, in uh, your, your auto parts stores, almost always wrong. And you know it's wrong because they'll say fits 67 to 70. Wrong. <laughs> There's reasons you don't want to mix and match all years. So I'm going to walk you through the different design changes, the different generations of uh, boosters that happen over the years, and tell you the ins and outs. So, first of all, for 6.7, this is what you would have got. We call this a, a Midland. And the way I remember it's a Midland brand booster is it has a band halfway down it. So, Midland has a band. And uh, these were actually very good boosters. I mean, they, they, they responded well and gave you a, a lot of power, more so than the next generation, the 69 Bendix little more finicky than uh, the Bendix, more prone to failure. And uh, I just had one go out the other day. Mine did not leak at all, had very few miles on it, had about 10 years, no, it was more than 10 years. Anyway, you would just barely push the brakes and it would send you through the windshield. Ah! That's one sign of a, a bad booster. Another sign is a leak sound. That's a very common one. You, you put on your brakes and you'll hear a sucking vacuum sound. Your engine will falter because of the uh, vacuum leak. That's a common one. There's, there's other ones too, but 67, 68, and 69 have a teardrop uh, shaft here. And you, if you're converting to power drum or power disc brakes, you have to change pedals. Why? because it takes more leverage to operate manual brakes than it does uh, a power brake. So you have a different fulcrum point. So there's no way you can hook this up to your, you know, if you, if you think you're going from manual brakes to power brakes and you want to just keep the pedal the same, you can't just jam this up to fit your pedal. Ain't gonna work. And you can't use a 70 pedal because 70s, this was the year that they did a straight back design. So uh, here's what happens if you try to put a 69 or set, you know, set 67 pedal on this. You're now uh, jamming your rod at less than a uh, parallel horizontal angle. And about the 20th time you push it in at an angle, you're going to ruin the seals in back. And your auto parts store doesn't have a clue. They've never sat in a Mustang or Cougar. They don't know the nuances between the different years. They'll gladly keep handing you boosters saying, uh, it's under warranty, we don't know why they keep going bad. Oh boy, those boosters are not easy to change. They, they're a headache. So get the right booster the first time. Now, you can put a uh, 69 booster in a, uh, a 67 or 8. But the problem is if you go the other way, there's a stop on the pedal. So this stop in 67 and 68 was welded into the pedal and what it was designed to do is if you got your foot back here and went like this it stopped the pedal and what it did is it stopped this from being yanked out well the problem is if you put this design uh, on your 69 you could uh, yank this rod out. This rod comes out easy. If I took this over the vise and just gave it a good tug, I could take that out. So be careful with that. That's a safety problem. Probably never are you going to get under your brake pedal and pull too hard. So be forewarned. Okay, so you can put a 69 on a 67, 68. 
vice versa. Make sure you got the right pedal. Even though they look different, uh, they look very different, uh, they do interchange if you change the pedal. Um, do know that 67.8 does not have a spacer, just has this tab welded on, and 69.70 does have a spacer. Sometimes people think, well, I should put this spacer here. Well, that doesn't work so good. Speaking of spacers, 67.68 are designed to have a two-piece, and this is the way we ship them, and when you ship back your cores, uh, it's a good idea to ship them back this way. This keeps the guts in place. When I say guts, you got this little guy. You don't want any contamination in there. You want this seated in place. And see that little guy in there? He's lubricated, and that will come out pretty easy. That needs to be in place just like that, or you will have problems. So anyway, when we ship them, that's how we like them. Also, uh, when we ship your booster, don't give me your, your spacer. I'll think it's a gift. And then when you go to put it all together, you'll be, uh, you'll be frustrated. So here's the two-piece spacer. Here's something that most auto parts don't, stores don't know and they don't have. This is a booster filter. This allows air in and out of the cavity as you press and release the pedal but it keeps the spiders out and the bugs and the dirt and whatever. So without this, you could uh, potentially have premature brake booster failure. It's also designed that uh, when your master cylinder leaks, it will uh, dribble out the fluid here. Now, I mentioned the car that I replaced the booster on the other day. My booster filter was just gelled with brake fluid and this was a blockage. That might have been part of why my booster wasn't reacting correct, correctly, is this was just totally solid with fluid. No air was coming or going out of there. Also, when I took it apart, the previous owner or shop or whatever had it installed like this. No, that's a fail. Now you got the wrong everything. I mean, it's for some reason it worked, but that isn't the way it goes. It goes like this. And when you get a master cylinder, a lot of your auto parts stores are going to sell you a one-size-fits-all. Don't accept it. It's, it'll often have a rectangular lid, and I might have a picture of one. And what they do is in the box, they give you a handful of brass fittings saying, here, here's your adapter parts. No matter what size of lines you have, we got you covered. Well, the problem is that, that, that makes your lines, you know, with the adapters and spacers, you know, hook up over here, which interferes with your shock tower, because, you know, the booster puts this out quite a ways. So only get the correct master cylinder. It should look just like this. And, of course, we sell that. And moving along to the 69 booster, I want to talk also about pitting. Look at these. Uh, a lot of these have had They've been on parts cars out in fields for years. They've dripped brake fluid. They look like crap. So if you have an unusually nice booster, and this is an unusually nice booster, maybe it was a service replacement part. I mean, look at the bottom side. That's, that's minimal. That's minimal. Anyway, um, if you want your unit rebuilt and sent back to you, we can do that. It takes longer. Or if you want a core match, say, hey, Don, mine has the FOMOCO label, and I notice most of them don't, and that's true, most of them don't, from the factory. Uh, we can do that for you, but send your core in advance. And once in a while, what people will do is say, here, I don't want to disable my car. I don't want to send my car in advance, but Don, here's some up-close pictures of my booster to prove to you that I have the FOMOCO and mine's not rusty. We can work around that. Again, 69s do not use spacers. This is how they come. Just a complete different design. So that should be there. And when you send back your core, I gotta have this. Gotta have it. Also, when you send back your core, be careful uh, to package well around this because if it bangs around, and it's easier to pull back this seal, I'm gonna pull this seal back, if it, that rod gets banged around, you're going to break this uh, plastic piece. 
and then your core has half value. Uh, that's that's getting to be a hard, expensive piece to replace there. So guard this area. And when you're changing your booster, make sure you don't drop it because this will hit at an angle and crack it. Okay, 6970 boosters, pretty much identical. The only thing they change is these two rods here. And then uh, in 71, they change everything. A um, whole different design. Uh, one rod. You know, if you look in some of the books, it will say power and disc are different boosters. Functionally, there aren't. I'm sure there was something different. Uh, fasteners, I don't know what. But there was something from the factory a little different. But functionally, the spring tension's the same. The diaphragm's the same. Everything bolts up the same. Of course, your master cylinder's different. But do know, when you buy a, master or a, a power brake booster, it doesn't matter if you have drums up front or disc up front. One booster. Um, the guy we have rebuild these, he's been doing it for me for 26 years. Never an issue. If there is an issue, well, I'm sorry, you bolted up something wrong. Uh, anyway, I can't remember any returns on these. They always work great. He is the guy. Uh, he's here local. So um, also know that <laughs> you can't send me in one of these for the core. I don't sell these. Um, the salesman that sold you this seemed like a good idea at the time, didn't it? Because you don't have to modify your firewall. It's got holes just so you can go right to your uh, holes for your manual brake pedal. One size fits all. You don't have to change your brake pedal. $159. Their one-time use is the problem. And we don't know how long that use is going to be, meaning it could last a month or four years, but they're not rebuildable and uh, they look cheap, I think, on your car. There's also some units out there that are brand new, mostly Bendix, and you'll notice they're gold irradiated like this. Um, those two, even though they look a lot like the original, uh, the new ones are not rebuildable. They're made in China, the tolerances are metric, not standard inside, one-time use. And from my experience, they don't hold up like the originals. So yeah, you save sending in a core, especially if you don't have one, uh, you save time, you save a hundred bucks, and in the end, you gain a headache. Just my opinion. Brake valves, we got a video on how to rebuild yours. What some people would rather do is just to buy the brand new plug and play unit without Ford part numbers and turn theirs in for a little bit of store credit. Um, do know these were never designed to be rebuilt, so that's a guy with some advanced skills and uh, a guy that's willing to accept failure because sometimes it does fail. A lot of people just for 68 uh, and 9 just like this plug and play unit. A lot of people in 67 that are going to disc brakes like this unit too because instead of putting this back in the tranny tunnel by the differential, it's right here, all unitized. Uh, I just set this out here to show you what you would have done in the day if you wanted to go power drum brakes. You know, you, you're tired of pushing that pedal, you go to the dealership, what, what can I do? Well, here's a 68 kit and I love it because they gave you everything. Didn't matter if you had a six cylinder, a big block, a small block, they gave you any combination. Of course, you gotta change the lines because now your master cylinder is not against the firewall, it's spaced out, so they gave you the correct lines that relocate the uh, master cylinder out towards the shock tower. I love this, look at this. They even gave you, so you didn't have to buy a new master cylinder. They gave you for your power drum car, you took out the snap ring, I'll show you where the snap ring is. We don't do this anymore, but back in the day, you take out the snap ring and you put this in because on uh, uh, manual drum brakes, it was an Audi, a rod coming out of here. And on, and on power brakes, it was an Innie, the, the shaft went in there. So anyway, kind of cool. And, and this is really funny. Uh, if you find one of these kits, they even gave you both pedals. So if you had a manual or automatic, you're covered, and then you could just throw away the other one. And uh, we got the factory Ford part number. We'll flash on the screen for this in case you get lucky. Uh, we don't have them too often. Uh, this is the factory template, so you can cut your firewall. Of course, we have a video that gives you a how-to, so uh, you can use this template. We're flashing in front of you or refer to our other video. And we're gonna even scan this to give you some part numbers and some, some instructions. Uh, 
I'm guessing that this is mostly going to coincide with the video we did. This is the step-by-step -step instructions. And I even have the crusty old box. But uh, don't get your hopes up. These kits are few and far between. You know, search on Google with a Ford part number. Maybe you'll get lucky. Now let's talk about what the other guys offer. Like I was saying earlier, it's laughable what they're, they're calling. Now once in a while, I get low on say a 69 booster and I'll go on eBay and I'll search from cheapest to most expensive and I'll see all these Cardoon units. I don't get it. Some of them are a thousand bucks. Well, then you go down the line. I picked up this one. <laughs> I picked up this one for 115 free shipping, no core. Somebody's confused. You can't find these cores <laughs> that cheap. I don't trust the Cardone rebuilds. Um, sorry, I mean, look at that goofy part. What, what is this? Um, this is a reproduction uh, backing plate, which is ill-fitting. I mean, you can make it fit, but it's not, it's not precision. And they, again, they sell this as a 67 to 70. Dirt cheap, I think it was 115 free shipping. So if you don't have a core, what the heck? Buying this rebuilt one from somebody on eBay who doesn't know what they're doing uh, might be uh, a good gamble. Uh, but you gotta be careful because I also bought this one. You know, I just bought it for a core. Uh, I bought this one and it said this is for a 1970. There's no way that's gonna, I mean the front looks like 70, the back resembles 70, but here we got a teared off shaft. We know that's not 70. And look at this bolt pattern. That's completely different than this. And I bought this months ago and I checked back the other day and uh, there's still multiple companies selling this as a 1970. In fact, I could not find a single listing where anybody listed a picture of a 1970 power brake booster on there. They all look like this or this. Wrong. So anyway, I know I'm, I'm sounding cocky again. Everybody else is wrong. I'm right. But again, we're the guys that have 150 cars outside this door and we buy them and drive them and fix them and restore them. And, you know, we're, we breathe this stuff in and out, it, it, day in and day out. The other guys, you know, it's just a listing in a book that, uh, well, they've never sat in a cooter. They don't know. It's not their fault. And it's really hard to change decades worth of misinformation like that. So anyway, I, I'm hoping this, I didn't confuse you too much. Uh, we have all this stuff on our website. Um, we got multiple videos that touch on brake stuff. ClassicCougarCommunity.com. There is no brake problem that hasn't been discussed on the forums. And there's more forums than ClassicCougarCommunity.com. There's MercuryCougar.net. There's a vintage Mustang forum. There's a Concours Mustang forum. There's plenty more too. But um, some of you guys are gonna get stuck. You're gonna go, I can't get pedal. Well, I'm sorry, you can't call me and talk to me five days a week. I, I don't have the time to help you through all those. We put as much as we can on our website, but the forums, it's there, trust me. Just put in the search words. Brakes won't bleed, brakes sticking, brakes problem, brake caliper, just whatever the search word is. Uh, meet us there and we can help you out there when we got time too. We're one of the people that answer questions there. So hope this helps.